Hello, my name is John Arnold and this is PhotoWalkthrough.com Tutorial 8, Chapter 1. First up today, I want to say a big thank you to everyone that filled in the audience survey. The results have started coming in and in particular I found your comments about the pros and cons of the show extremely useful. I was particularly amused by the various comments about my English accent. Sorry if y'all are one of the folks that said I'm sometimes a little difficult to understand. Also, someone commented that the iPod video feed episode 4 wasn't compatible with their iPod video. That's because I messed up and put the full-size version in that feed by accident. That should be fixed now, uh, but I don't know how you go about re-downloading it, so mail me if you want the file and I'll get it to you. Now, if you've ever thought about going on a photography workshop or training course, then I have something for you. Chris Marquardt, host of the amazingly popular and award-winning photography podcast Tips from the Top Floor, is running a photography workshop in Tübingen, southern Germany, from the 11th to the 15th of September. It'll be five days exclusively in the company of other photographers, where you can learn and experiment with your photography and gain insights and instant feedback on your work. Chris will mainly be teaching the course, but he's asked me if I'll come along as a co-host, so I'll be there to teach some post-processing and generally help out during the other sessions so you'll get two hosts for the price of one. During the week we'll cover composition, lighting, studio portrait photography, scenic photography and post-processing, all with reviews, critiques, practical exercises and assignments. We'll also go on a number of excursions, including a tour around the wonderful old town of Tübingen, and a trip on the Stockerkahn, which is a kind of gondola or punt. There'll also be an excursion to another photogenic location chosen by the attendees. Voting on that's being held currently on the Tips of the Top Floor Forum. And on the first day, we can get to know each other when we visit a German beer garden. On the Tuesday, there'll be a social night, including a meal. And finally, if you're really keen, you can stay behind on the Wednesday and participate in the production of an episode of Tips from the Top Floor. The exact schedule is still being finalised, but expect the week to be absolutely packed with interesting places and people. It's an opportunity that's second to none to learn and improve your photography and come home with some fantastic pictures. But please note, places are limited and it's filling fast. The last I heard, there were only five places left. So if you're interested in attending, then please visit www.tipsfromthetopfloor.com and click on the image on the right for the workshop. I'll also put a link to the workshop pages in the show notes, and I really hope I'll see some of you there. Now, one other quick announcement. I don't normally cover photography news in this show, but I've been waiting for the Windows beta of Adobe Lightroom to be launched for months, and finally it's here. Lightroom is a photo organizing, processing, and printing tool. It's a bit like a very enhanced version of the bridge, but it's built totally with digital photographers who take lots of pictures in mind, and it will especially appeal to you if you shoot in RAW. The reason I'm mentioning it here is that it's a product I expect I'll be using quite a bit in the future, so you can be fairly sure you're going to see it on the show at some point. Right now, Lightroom is still in beta, and I'm just starting to spend time with it, learning how it works. The Mac versions have had very positive feedback so far, and I like the Windows version very much too. But, if you don't have a top-of-the-line PC, this version is going to take your computer outside and give it a good kicking. Performance is not yet what it should be. I've got a very well-spec machine, and although Lightroom is usable, it still stutters and stops when I'm playing with the sliders in the developer module. So, clearly there's some way to go before the product launches for real. But, if you've got a Ninja PC and you're interested in trying it out, then head on over to labs.adobe.com and download it. I'll put a link to that in the show notes as well. Now, we've done a lot of black and white and duotone images here on the show, so this time I wanted to choose something a bit more colourful for the summer. We're currently having a heat wave here in the UK, so this image just feels right to me, and it's a fun technique that you can apply to just about anything. It works especially well for images that are very iconic, and by that I mean simple, recognisable subjects that stand out separated in the image from everything else. Andy Warhol produced probably the most iconic version of this with his images of Marilyn Monroe, and what I'm going to do is take the flower image and turn it into this Warhol style of triptych. A triptych is just a work that's divided into three sections, like this one. So let's start with our basic flower image. And as you can see, it's not all that inspiring. It was shot at 70mm in RAW on my 10D. I was intentionally trying to blur the background here by using a shallow depth of field. And depth of field is just the parts of the shot that are in focus. You can control that by choosing different apertures. 
Larger apertures have smaller f-stop numbers, and I got this shot by getting quite close to the flower and using a larger aperture. In this case, f6.7, which doesn't sound so large, but the closer you get to the subject, the less depth of field you get. So f6.7 at quite close to the flower gave me a very small depth of field, and as you can see, the background there, the grass and the leaves below are nicely out of focus. I suggest, by the way, spending an hour shooting stuff like this at different apertures. It's a great way to learn the capabilities of your lens and your camera, and as a result you will end up with much better camera control in future when you absolutely need it, when you've got very little time to take a shot or when there are people around waiting for you. So just learning the capabilities of your lens, uh, a very useful thing to be doing. Right, the most obvious starting point here has to be the colours, so let's jump right in with a gradient map. So let's, oh, let's start off by getting our image nicely centered and just to begin with actually rather than the gradient map I'm just going to crop it so I'm going to use the cropping tool here and I'm going to say I want it square so I'm going to choose a width of one and a height of one and I'm just going to draw a box around it and then sort of center it so that the the dot in the middle here shows you where the center of the square is so I'll put that somewhere near the middle of the flower um, and I'm just trying to leave the same amount of space at the top and bottom and the sides so I need to go up just a little bit, not too much. The reason it's looking slightly wrong is this petal at the bottom here is sort of stunted and smaller than it should be. So I think about there. Right, that gradient map that I talked about. Let's start off by going into the adjustment layers here. And I'm going to choose gradient map. Now, that's created a gradient map, as you can see. And it, by default, it's going from my foreground colour to my background colour. It's popped up this gradient map window. So let's click on that gradient and it's going to give us this gradient editor. What I actually want is to have a variety of different colours in this. I, I like the sort of the way the edges sort of look uh, post-processed overexposed. Um, so what I really want is to have the various parts of the image uh, choose the tones for the background colours and the foreground colours on the petals and this image happens to work out very nicely for that. Um, I happen to know that the darker tones in the background of the image and the lighter tones are in the foreground of the image. But we can we can figure that out for ourselves. Let's just back out of our gradient map here and just so that you can see how I would figure this out if I didn't know that strip from, from the word go, let's choose a curves layer and in the curves layer, let's shrink that down a bit so that you can see what I'm doing if you hold down the Option or Alt key on your piece on your keyboard, and then click on the image, if you look at the curve, you can see on the curve where the tone that you're clicking on is. So if I drag over the background, all in these greens, you can see that those tones in the background are all in the very bottom third of this curve, and that means that they're in the very bottom third of the brightness values. So if this was a levels dialog, I'll show you a levels dialog, you might have seen histograms before. Remember the way the histogram works is you've got your dark tones at the bottom here, you've got your light tones at the top here, you've got your mid tones in the middle here, and what you're showing is what percentage of the pixels in the image are in those dark or middle or light tones. So we've got quite a few in the darker tones here, not much in the middle tones here, and a couple of spikes in the brighter tones here which is pretty easily, pretty easy to spot within the image. You can see we've got a lot of darker tones in the background here, not much in the mid-tones, and then we've got a lot of brighter tones on the petals of the flower themselves. So, going back to our curves, and once again holding down the Alt key and clicking around, what I'm going to do with my gradient map is I'm going to map those lower third tones onto some less bright colours, and then you can see if I click over the petals here, these are in the sort of upper half to upper third of the tones values. They're right up near the top of the curve, pretty much all over the flower. So I'm going to map those to some brighter colours. So I can close that, that curves window. I don't want to keep it. This is just for me to explore the image and learn where my tones are. So I'm going to go back to my gradient map. And again, we're going foreground to background. I've left myself with that yellow chosen by accident, which is not what I wanted, but that's okay. I'm going to now 
with the gradient map here. There are a whole bunch of gradient map presets at the top here, by the way. A lot of these come with Photoshop. And, you know, there's some interesting ones. So that one there is, is not a million miles from the kind of thing we want to do. So let's start with that one, actually. That's not a bad place to begin. Let's, and, and you can see what that's doing. If you look in the gradient, we've got yellow through to purple, through to orange, through to a sort of a turquoisey blue. And, and that's exactly what we're seeing in the gradient here. And the way this gradient map works is that the darker tones are at the left here, just like the histogram. The lighter tones are at the right here, just like the histogram. So what we're doing is we're mapping the darker tones to yellow, the lower mid-tones to purple, the upper mid-tones to, to orange, and the lighter tones to the turquoise blue. What I actually want to do is map that lower, uh, lower color there. So I'm going to click on that little slider there. And you can see I've got a color box here, which if I click on it, opens up my color picker. And I'm going to choose a sort of a, a darker cyan -y color. And I'm going to press OK on that. And then I want to map my purpley colors. And let's choose something. Let's choose something in the richer blues. Yeah, and I'm just. It's a bit difficult to see here with, with all these windows up, but uh, I'm looking at the background, and this is pretty much ex exclusively modifying the background of the image, because we're still working in the bottom half of the tone values. And remember, the, the petals came sort of halfway into the tone, from, from the halfway point upwards. So we are going to just affect the edges of these petals, which is great. That's exactly what I want. So I'm going to choose a sort of a dark, rich blue. And then up here. What should we choose here? Let's go for, uh, let's try white. That's not quite right, is it? Let's go for that. Let's go for another blue, quite a light blue. And then at the top, we'll choose white there. Okay, that's that's not a bad start, and that starts to let you see the way I would choose a gradient for this particular image. Um, I've got sort of cyans and dark blues in the background, just something to give it a bit of texture, so that you can see that there is an out of focus background there. But I'm not going for realism here. I'm not interested in realism for this for this image. This image is all about. Uh, post-processing and uh, sort of perhaps arrogantly improving on reality. I'm going to make a digital garden here. I'm going to make a variety of different colored versions of this flower and I'm going to make my own little digital garden and you'll see by the end exactly what I mean by that. But okay, let's press OK on that and OK on that. Right, now the next step of this is that I don't want this gradient map to apply to just the uh, entire image. I like the sort of uh, yellow, if I just turn off, click off the eye there so that we can see the background image. I like the center of the image. I want to use some of that yellow. I just want to improve on reality. I don't want to completely replace it. So uh, remember, all these adjustment layers come with a layer mask. And the layer mask is what is selected by default when you're working on that layer. So I'm going to choose a gradient tool. This is all about gradients, this, this image. Um, so yeah, the gradient tool there. And you can see this is choosing a linear gradient, which is the first of these five icons. I actually want a circular gradient. And I want my gradient tool to be white to black. Um, and no, in fact, black to white. Let's go from the middle outwards. So I'm going to use black to white, which means that where I cl start clicking, I'm going to get black. And where I finish clicking, I'm going to get white. And I'm going to just click on the middle of the flower and I'm going to draw a line out to the edge of one of the petals. And let's see how that goes. Now, what that's done, on the gradient map, if you look at this gradient map, if I alt-click on the gradient map, that's option-clicking on the gradient map, this is, this is what it's drawn. It's done a black blob in the middle that fades out gray to white at the edges. Now, the center, obviously, is being, therefore, hidden the effect of this gradient map is being hidden in the center of this image. And we're getting the gradient map around the edge. And we're getting no gradient map in the middle. So the yellow is showing through. Now, that's that's pretty good. That's the kind of effect I wanted. Um, but it's going out a little bit too far. So I'm just going to Control Z, not Control Z. I'm, going to, I'm just going to draw this gradient again. 
because it's a black to white gradient it will just replace what I had there before so I'm going to start in the middle and I'm not going to go out quite so far this time I just want the yellow to burst out from the middle now that's not quite far enough so somewhere in between is about there that's pretty good I want I want this the very center of the flower here to be nicely colored and I want the yellow to sort of bleed out along the petals right and the final step for today I'm just going to tweak my color gradient because although it's pretty good I like the background a lot um, I'm not happy with the lighter blue that I chose there I'm going to choose something a little more radical I'm going to go for a really vibrant blue that's better that's better right that's the kind of blue I want there's too much of it down the petals now but you'll see what how I fix that in a moment back in my gradient editor I'm just going to drag the sliders around here so that cyan's great but I don't want too much of it the dark blue is excellent I want more of that the bright vibrant blue I just want to appear on the ends of the petals so I'm going to just drag my gradient sliders around and all this is doing is dragging around the points on the gradient where those colors start and as you can see it's it's merging from this bright blue here on the gradient through to white and I've got a little slider in the middle here that I can drag left and right if I want it to be a quicker blend from one to the other or a slower blend from one to the other so I'm just going to drag that up to there and I'm going to drag my white down a little further let's see if I can make that blue just a little bit more vibrant let's go all the way that's full-on blue now I don't think there's much more vibrancy I can add to that let's just see if I can tweak the darker tones so they come in I want to see the edges of the petals I want the dark blue around the edges of the petals just to sort of take it off the background even more this is all an iconic flower it's not a realistic flower at all I just want it to totally lift off the page and look like that wonderful Marilyn image that Andy Warhol did so I think that's probably a pretty good place to leave the leave the colors on that one um, we've got a lot more work to do on this image before it's ready to be turned into the triptych but I think that's a good place to stop for today thank you very much for listening and I will catch you next week